Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to buy out a business partner. Um, so this is probably one of the most frequent questions I get because a lot of my friends know that I've bought out a past business partner, uh, and so I've obviously been through this process. So if you're seeing this video, uh, you know, oftentimes it's not a good place to be, right? Because you're probably frustrated uh, with your business partner, uh, with the direction of the business. Maybe you guys have a disagreement in where the business should go. Uh, maybe Maybe you just don't like working with them anymore or, or for any of those reasons you're here uh, and I've got another video that I would recommend that you check out which is how to avoid getting in getting into a partnership uh, like that uh, in the first place um, but we're here to talk about how do you buy them out and how do you kind of come to an agreement how do you value the business we're gonna kind of break this down um, a few ways so first things first the best way to avoid this um, is through a really good operating agreement now, an operating agreement is kind of like the bylaws for your company and how you're going to operate. And oftentimes your op operating agreement, if you have one, will have kind of laid out how you're going to choose to buy out um, the other business partners. So a, a really good operating agreement will say, hey, if you want to leave, here's what happens. If I want to leave, here's what happens. If you want to take a six month vacation to Australia or wherever, here's what happens. If you get hit by a bus, here's what happens. You kind of all have all these if this than that contingencies. But chances are, if you're getting to this place, you, you probably, like I was the first time I ran into this, I didn't have an operating agreement, which was like the dumbest mistake that I could have ever made. Uh, so you learn it the hard way. So if, if you do have an operating agreement though, check that. You might have a couple different clauses. Um, so there's a shotgun clause. Um, that's one of the more um, popular ones. Um, there's another, uh, yeah, there's kind of a couple popular clauses there. There's a third party valuation. That and a shotgun clause is probably uh, the two most common that you'll see. Um, so a shotgun clause is kind of like if you're, if you're growing up as a kid, I remember um, having a huge sweet tooth and me and my friends, you know, like our mom would make brownies or something and, and, and they would say, you cut, I choose. <laughs> um, so, so you cut the brownie in half, I choose which half I want. So then the person who's cutting the brownie is like trying to make the brownie as even as possible because <laughs> you don't want to give the, the guy a bigger piece uh, and so then because the, they get to choose. So it's similar. A shotgun clause says the first person uh, who wants to um, buy the other person or who wants to sell or buy the business, they name a price and then the other person gets to choose whether they're gonna buy or sell for that price. Um, now, the obvious benefit um, to a shotgun clause is it kinda cuts through the noise really quickly um, because you're gonna get what's most likely a fair evaluation because if, if you wanna sell, then they're on the hook for that. And now a really good shotgun clause um, it's pretty airtight. So just like proceed with caution and don't just throw out numbers because you might get yourself kind of painted into a corner where you actually have to buy or sell um, the business for this. Now, the other way that you can do this is through a third party uh, evaluation. This is pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. Uh, the only way that you can make this easier from an operating agreement perspective is agree on the way that you're gonna value the business ahead of time because that is the trickiest part. Third party valuations, they can come in any shape or size. It can be a multiple of revenue, it can be a multiple of EBITDA, so earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It can be uh, any other types of ways that people want based on other companies that have sold recently in the space. Like this is just a slippery slope. And then it kind of becomes a he said, she said like, oh, I'm gonna hire a company to value the business. And oh, you're gonna hire a company and they have different things, of course, because we hired them and they have our interest in mind. And so now we're just arguing about valuations. I'll just tell you, um, depending on the business, any, uh, a common multiple is anywhere between two to five X EBITDA, okay? So what, basically what that means is let's take your bottom line profit now, obviously I just mentioned EBITDA, if you're not familiar with the term, stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So depending on your business model and how much uh, interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization that you have, that could swing wildly from your profit number. But let's just, for simplicity's sake, say it's your profit number. You can get anywhere between a two to five X multiple on average. Now this is depending on a lot of things, key man risk, this is depending on the market conditions, how systematized and repeatable is your revenue stream and replicable over a series of years, like all those types of questions. 
And that's gonna kind of factor into your multiple. Now, if you're in a software business or a recurring revenue business, your multiple is gonna be way higher. Or if you're in other really fast growth uh, markets. So if you own a gym, uh, where it's a recurring revenue model, you can get a better multiple, but especially software companies. A lot of times software companies are getting five to 12X revenue, which is just insane. <laughs> um, I, I, think that's, I think that's crazy, but that's what some of these companies are selling for. So you gotta figure out how you're gonna value the business. And really it comes down to a willing buyer and a willing seller. I mean, when the rubber meets the road, um, that's what you gotta figure out is who's gonna buy, who's gonna sell, and what would the market pay for this, and that's gonna factor this. So kind of for the most of the rest of this video, I'll just give you some examples firsthand of how I did this um, for me personally. So in my situation, uh, I showed up to one of my, uh, my company offsite. I found out from one of my employees that my business partner was trying to kick me out of the business. Uh, and I found out, I kind of got my ducks in a row and I came back to him and I said, hey, uh, I know what you're doing. I'm not cool with it. Uh, one of us is going to buy the other person out. We're no longer going to be business partners. We're going to bring in a mediator um, to help us through this process. And both of those things are non-negotiable. I said, here's three mediators that I found um, that have been recommended to me. I want you to pick the one that you like the best because I don't want you to think this is just someone that's in my corner. <laughs> um, so I, I want you to pick one and you can pick whoever you want. But here are three that I've heard are really good. Here's the one that comes most recommended, but you make the call. So that's what happened. Then we went into mediation. Luckily, um, we had a uh, mediator who was highly skilled. He was a former accountant, a former lawyer, and then a current practicing like therapist. So I had kind of all the bases covered. He, he understood business law, understood accounting, and also was really good with people and the kind of like the therapy side of it. And so I think he charges 500 bucks an hour. <laughs> uh, so that was kind of incentive to uh, get this process over very quickly um, because it just felt like we were lighting up money on fire. Now here's the kicker and kind of a quick caveat on this is because we didn't have a, an operating agreement, one of the things that we had to literally argue about and agree on was who's gonna pay for his bill. And it ended up being me as the person who bought the business. So we didn't split it 50-50. So I would factor that into your op operating agreement. If you're just getting started, that's a lesson I learned there. So we work with a mediator. He kind of interviews both parties, says, hey, what do you want? What do you want? What's the problem here? And then he brings us together and then we have a conversation. Now, we, you know, really, we didn't have a shotgun clause. So both parties just need to say, hey, here's what I want. Here's what I think it's worth. And that's the starting point. And we can BS and talk around the point and all that stuff, but until we really get to those numbers, we're not having a real conversation about this. So I knew kind of what I was willing to pay and he had his number. Um, luckily, he wanted to sell and I wanted to buy. So obviously that's a different conversation, um, but you gotta kind of get to that. And also just keep in mind that that's leverage. Like if someone really needs to sell, cause in my situation, he really needed to sell um, because I was the face of the business. And so if I left, it's key man risk, the business was worth way less. And so third party, he would not be able to get um, what uh, he probably wanted for the business. So I was the buyer that would be willing to pay the most, which means that I can drop the amount that I'm willing to pay because he couldn't get that matched anywhere else. So I went into this negotiation knowing that that was the case. These are all factors that you have to think about is who else would pay a reasonable amount um, for this business and what would that highest amount be? And is it easier to just sell it to me? Right, obviously if you're in a disagreement, that might be a tough place. But so that's where we kind of came from. He came with his price, I came with my price. Um, we, we landed on something uh, that was fair and then it was up to me to find financing. So um, the way that I structured the deal, and you can obviously structure it a lot of different ways. I prefer if I'm buying to stretch out the cash flow um, because I don't wanna be responsible for a lump sum and get a lot of debt. Um, so the way that I did it is I did a, 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 you know, a six figure lump sum up front and then X thousand dollars a month per month for the next 12 months, which was really shorter than I liked, would have liked to do, um, but it was kind of the longest that he would agree to. And I, you know, I knew that I, I was pretty confident that this was a good decision and that that would pay that back. Um, so what ended up happening is we got to an agreement. Um, we got kind of the, uh, the final numbers ironed out, um, what all I got, 
what all I was paying, all that stuff. Uh, and then I wired the largest sum of, my, of money that I've ever wired in my life. <laughs> uh, and I went multiple six figures in debt for the first time in my, in my life. I'd borrowed money from friends and family and my parents' retirement and all that stuff. And so my butt was on the line uh, to make this uh, business successful. Uh, we kind of set out the parameters of what needed to be done by him uh, and another person um, that, that was connected to him that was in the business. <laughs> Uh, and what things that they had to do over the course of the month. So basically what happened, uh, I found out in January of this, of this, the year that it happened, uh, about February 1st, we started mediation. Luckily by the end of February, we were done, which I think is a really fast timeline. We worked pretty quickly through it. And then we had a list of things that him and the person he was associated with that was in the business had to do in the month of March by the end of the month. And then if they did that, I would wire the money on April 1st. That's what I did. And then they were out of the business. The business was fully mine. Uh, and one of the things that I had to do in this instance, I had to personally guarantee it. So end to end, uh, at, kind of at the end of the day, um, this was a really great decision. I went on to pay off all of that debt over the course of the next 11 months, uh, which in terms of payback periods, if you're, you're kind of calculating your, your payback period for your buyout, oftentimes that's two to three years. Um, so if you can get it better than that, then obviously you've got a really good deal. So let's kind of recap what we've learned so far. First off, try to avoid this by having a good operating agreement and not getting into a partnership that you don't think will last uh, long term. Um, second, off you've got a couple different clauses that might be baked into your operating agreement if you have those then that's obviously the parameters that you're gonna have to work within uh, if not it's all gonna be up in the air I recommend a mediator that was some of the best money that we spent I think we ended up spending about uh, 10,000 or I say we I paid for everything uh, but uh, I ended up spending about ten thousand dollars it was some of the best money um, that I spent because I truly believe it saved me a ton of money on the overall valuation of the business and helped us get to the finish line on an agreement uh, significantly faster. Um, so that's the process. That's what I recommend. That's how you can do it. There's obviously a lot more information out there on the exact uh, specifics of multiples and how to do that. Uh, but I hope that you found this helpful. As always, comment below. Let me know what you think. I'd also love to hear kind of like business partner buyout horror stories. So if you have any of those, um, comment below and let me know uh, on that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.